Everybody knows that around the world, in each corner, kings would come into power that were extremely evil. But some of these kings were even more than extremely evil. Let's get to know a few of those. We'll start a little easy. Henry VIII, King of England. We have made a video about him before, and he executed his wives. He executed other people as well. Like for example, if his cook didn't cook a food properly, he would have them executed. Nobody had the guts to tell him why, because he would be executed as well. This guy was king from 1509 all the way to 1547. And the History Channel says between 70 to 72,000 people were executed because of him. And 92 out of all those people were extremely famous. Two of them were the Queen of England, his wives. Obviously Henry's kingdom came to an end, but he had a daughter and she came into power after him. Mary the first, and she's the one that's known as Bloody Mary. If you watched our video about Henry VIII, you'll know that since he wanted to divorce his wife, he turned the English church from Roman Catholic to Protestant. But Mary wanted to turn it back to Catholic. She was extremely religious, and she was dedicated to Roman Catholic. Anybody that spoke against her, she would set them on fire. When she was in power, she had 300 people executed by fire. She kinda one-upped her father. But let's leave England, and since we're looking at evil kings, let's go a little bit behind. Julius Caesar, Roman Emperor. He was so evil that in just four years of being an emperor, they have 40 years worth of writing about him. And it was mostly about the bad things. You guys know that in the Roman Empire, there was a bunch of stadiums, and the Colosseum is the most famous one. People would sit on the stand and watch the gladiators fight to the death. Who were the gladiators? They were basically slaves that could be warriors and they could fight good and put on a show. And they would get killed in the end. When Caesar would watch the gladiators go at it, he wanted some too. When the show was basically stopped and all the gladiators were messed up and some were killed, everybody would leave and Caesar would enter the arena completely armored, but a gladiator with no weapon would be in the Colosseum. Caesar had everything he needed, so he easily killed the gladiator. Each week he would do this. He would go to the stadium and they had to save one person just for him. And the funny part is that when he would kill the gladiator, he would be very proud and act like he did something special and the people had to cheer for what he was doing. In the four years he was king, he killed a lot of people, and each week he would murder someone in the arena. The historians say he was a sadistic person, and he thought he was God. And even he would write that he's the only person in the world that could talk to God, and I can do what he wants me. This guy that claimed to be a God was only alive for four more years because some people planned to kill him and they stabbed him 23 times. The next king is very obvious, Ivan the Terrible. One of the worst things he did was the massacre of Novgorod. He was very religious and he was a fan of the Orthodox Church and in this massacre he said anyone that's against the Orthodox Church and stay there until they freeze to death. He killed 15,000 people by freezing them. 
But this wasn't the reason he was named Ivan the Terrible. The reason was that he beat up his son's wife so the baby could be aborted. He didn't like that woman and he didn't want a grandchild from her either. And the thing is, his son comes home and realizes what Ivan did and sees his child is dead. He asks why did you do it but Ivan pulls out a sword and kills his own son. And that is why they call him Ivan the Terrible. One of the worst monarchs in the world is Leopold II and we've made a special video about him. Worst Emperor in History. This guy had zero mercy. Just like we said in that clip, he thought he was owner of a different country and he also believed that the people of that country were his and should do whatever he says. This guy holds a record in that department because he turned an entire country to his own slaves. The more we move forward, the worse they get. One of the worst emperors was Attila, Attila the Hoon. Europeans call Attila the most evil warrior. He captured Europe, but he had no mercy. Even when they surrendered, he wouldn't let go. Not only did he fight with armies, but whenever he would enter cities, he showed the people the same treatment. If he was angry, no soul was left alive. Attila killed more than 500,000 civilians. This is not counting the wars he fought against soldiers. In history, there's a lot of monarchs that were this evil, but we can't explain every single one. But the biggest one, which a lot of people agree with, is Genghis Khan. Genghis was born in 1162 and he died in 1227. He was the first Mongolian emperor that decided to go to war with different countries. People call him the most bloodthirsty emperor in history and nobody can surpass that. The amount of people he killed is unbelievable. Historians calculate that when he was king, between 10 to 15 million people were killed. It is true that he had an army and they helped him out, but if you calculate it, this amount of killings with just swords and daggers, it's an insane amount. It's not like they had bombs and they could just drop it on people and kill a bunch of them. With all these simple tools, he killed this many people. This guy attacked a lot of places. China, India, and a lot of other places. But sources say the biggest killing Genghis Khan ever did was in Iran. One of the biggest massacres he caused was in the city of Neshabur and he killed 1.7 million people. Historians say the Persians would not give up. They would start fighting with them and that is why he would cause a massacre. They would first kill the men, rape the women and kill them along with the children. All the sources will be in the description. If you want to know more about these kings, please read those.